And it's just a huge honor to be podcast interviewing my friend Steve Elwell today, Howard, who is a legend in Ahwatukee in the tri community. I mean, gosh, your Facebook group, um, what is it, Steve Bay? What, yep. What's the name of your Facebook group? Steve Bay. Steve Bay. And how many people are on your Facebook group, Steve Bay? We're over 14,500, adding about 75 to 100 people a day. Holy gamoli. So my journey with Steve was in, in this very house, right in the next room. Was it four years ago? Yep. Before I was your, this before your first iron. I was this short, fat, bald guy. And I my, I said um my my dental assistant's husband Joe had um it was one Saturday where Colleen texted me and she said, Joe's in the water. And I like woke up, it was like six in the morning or something. I'm like, what is she talking about? And then like two hours later, I get another text from my dentist as he says, uh, he's out of the water and he's on his bike. And I thought, oh, that's right. He does some, some, some Iron Man thing. <laughs> and then I was going about my day. Then it was like four o'clock in the afternoon. She goes, Joe's off the bike and now he's going to run a marathon. I thought, oh my God, she, this started when I was asleep. It's now in the afternoon. And then it was like 10, 11 o'clock at night. She texted me this picture. I'm, he won. And I thought... I'm going to do that. It was so mind-blowing. I said, I need a huge, crazy, insane, unachievable goal. And when I told my friends that I was going to do this, they laughed so hard, they almost had a heart attack. They said, um, just, just the only people that believed in me were my boys. That My boys said, well, dad's, dad's got that, uh, uh, that, that non-stop thing. And, uh, and I, so I asked around. Who could help me do this? And everybody said, the first guy you got to call is Steve. <laughs> and you came in the house, and um, we started a plan, and you started laying out what it was. And I said, you're just crazy. And, uh, Ryan, I don't think anybody uh, will believe that I got three Ironmans. Will you go get my three Ironman? Or just oh. bring that rack over here. And you yep. came in the house, and you didn't laugh, and uh, you got me through year after year. Three times you got me through. Uh, so so tell us um, cuz you, you got a you got a day job. I do have a day job. So so how do you how are you the legend in Ahwatukee? Yeah yeah so just bring it back here right you get in the picture. That's beautiful. <laughs> that was a uh, my uh there I got three of them are Ironmans. One was like a 70 mile Mesa bike. I don't know what they all are but uh, Soma that's yep, a that's half. A half yep. That's a half. Yep. Soma's a half. Yep. So that's, uh, what's that? Oh, and there's your, uh, that's your Tour de Scottsdale medal. Ah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ryan, for yeah. bringing my nice. medals. So see, if, if I can do an Ironman, there couldn't be any one of you watching in Ahwatukee that couldn't do it. Um, but it was a big commitment. I mean, it was every morning at 5 o'clock for two hours, seven days a week yep. for the whole year. Yep. And the thing is, Howard, that I found that nobody could look inside the heart of somebody and know whether they have what it takes to win or not. You can't judge somebody from appearances. You know, you may have the desire to physically change and to build up to be able to cross that finish line, and you can't judge that from outside. I've known very, very thin people that look like they're fabulously fit that don't do the work and can't make it across the finish line in time. And I know people that are twice my size that beat me across the finish line. Right, so, right. It's all of that. I'll tell you what, the most humbling experience ever it was the first Ironman, which was the best weather conditions of the all three I did. <laughs> and it was like, I just, I was like six miles from the finish line. I, I, just, I just couldn't do it anymore. And I, I just, I just, just lost it, you know, just at the very end. And um, this 78 year old man, I'm 55, so I would have been like 51. This 78 year old man said, What's going on? I said, man, I, I just can't. He goes, he goes, dude, you're six miles from the finish line. Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> and he pushed me. And I'm just like, you're right. You could, you could run six miles just pretending there's a grizzly bear trying to kill you or something. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was amazed at what's the oldest. What are some of the most outlandish Ironman finish you've seen? I mean, like in age. What's the oldest you've seen? Uh, I've seen people up in their 70 pluses. There's one gal who's a nun that finishes the Ironman World Championships, and she is is, is up in that age category. But I too. bet she's a flying nun. She's oh, not yeah, even, she's fast. She's not she's, even running. She's strong for as, as old as she is, for sure. Get, get, remember that movie where we Little, The Flying Nun? Oh, yeah. Was it Whoopi <laughs> Goldberg in that, or? No, I 
don't think it was Whoopi Goldberg, oh. but uh, she was a nun in something. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah. so a flying so a nun. Yep. In her seventies. A nun in her seventies. And I um I ran next and and there were so many people doing it for so many reasons. Um, I knew people who did it um like me to lose weight. Um, some, some, what are some of the success stories? How much weight have you seen someone lose spending a year training for an Ironman? And it wasn't necessarily specifically because of the training, but more the nutrition, you know, what they, they changed, what they were putting in their mouths and how they were eating. But I've seen people very common for people to lose, you know, 25 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds kind of thing in a year's worth of training. No problem. And I've heard stories of and read and seen pictures of people that have lost as much as 100 pounds and crossed the finish line. Those transformations are uh, few and far between, but they, they occur for sure. Yeah, th there seemed to be a lot of reasons people were doing it. Um, I, I met people in the Ironman that were doing it um, to get off you know, substance abuse, um, to... Um, just get their energy out in the morning so they didn't go into work and be aggravated. They said, you know, if I do my, my workout at five o'clock, I don't blow up during, during a, a staff meeting or a board meeting or, you know, it seemed like, sure, they it seemed like everybody had their own by journey. Something and inspired by something, you know, they, like you, you know, wanted to have a goal that was so absolutely unbelievable, unfathomable in their minds that uh, they wanted to learn how to break that down and make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and that's a big goal. I don't know if everybody knows. We're sitting here talking about Iron Man, but not everybody knows what it is. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You're right. Right? So an right. Iron Man consists of a, a 2.4-mile swim followed by a 112-mile bike ride and then following that up with a marathon. So it's 2.4 2.4 mile swim, swim, 112 mile bike, and a 26.2 mile run. Total combination is 140.6 miles that that person covers. And on a 26.2 mile marathon, do you know where the point two came from? I don't off the top of my head. I think it has to do with marathon tradition. Um, right? Well, the the marathon was 26, and they, they went anyway. They they laid it out. And the last minute, the queen found out they weren't running by her balcony so she could wave. Oh, so they had so to they had do to a little up. jot down because the queen wanted to wave to everybody. That's why it's a 26.2. I did not know that. And now you call it an Iron Man on the periodic table. What's the element for iron? F-E. F-E. And what is a man called? A male. So Iron Man is really female. And there you go. Do you like Why that? Why aren't you ladies out doing Iron Man? That was another thing that was, um, what percent is it boys versus girls? I don't or know women? the exact percentages, but it's somewhere in the ballpark of 35, 40% females and 60% males. And it huh. depends on whether you're looking at the age group field or the professional field. It depends on the venue, too. But here's the most romantic thing about Iron Man. Romantic. What? It is. It is very romantic because it starts at 7 and you got to be done by midnight. By midnight. So how many hours is that? What 18 is or 17? Uh, what is that? 7, 7 is 12, plus 5 is 17. So it's 17 hours. Now, like, who's the fastest time that you've seen in Arizona? Yeah, you know, uh, it's 8 hours and 12, okay. 8, we'll 15 just say, in that ball. So let's so say... We'll call it an 8-hour day. So if it's just 7... Um, all the way till noon would be six, seven, eight. So, um, you know, two or three o'clock, all the elite athletes are coming across. All the, the pros. Line. Yeah, all the pros. But they they cross that line at two, and we have till midnight. You have till midnight. So what, what I'm saying, is it, it's a race for all levels, all ages. I mean, if you're a pro and you want to cross the line at two in the afternoon, a lot of the middle athletes... In the middle, they just their personal goal is to cross the finish line before it's dark and the lights are on. Yeah, you have and the uh, you have the age the age groupers, the competitive age groupers. What they're trying to do is they're typically trying to qualify to go to the Big Island. They're trying to qualify okay. Explain what age group is because I, I didn't know what that meant. So <clears throat> you have professional athletes in the professional field, and in Ironman racing, you have elites and age groupers that are are combined together in the field they compete against each other so what they do is they break 
people up by age. So I'm 56 years old. For me to compete against somebody who's 30 years old would just not be fair. So what they do is they'll, they'll break ages up. So you'll have, you know, 30 to 34, 35 to 39, 40 to 44, 45 to 49, et cetera, et cetera. So what are we in? I'm 55, what are we in? Fif we, you're, there, we're in 55 to 59. 55 to 59? So yeah. what you're saying is that if I could get a fake ID that said I'm 86. You would rock it. I could win my age you, group? You might win the entire age group. Because Notice he may, said might. Not, at 80, at 86, be. he still said might. Wow. <laughs> he didn't say you're going to win. Howard, you're it's, winning it the just 80, depends on 85 who shows to 90. Up, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but it's, it's the same thing. I like those sports. Um, like when I was in high school, my, my sport was wrestling. And all four of my boys wrestled from age 5 to 15. Sure, weight around. class, right? Because he had weight class. Classes in boxing and wrestling. Well, because a 170 pound kid can't compete against a yeah. 220 pounder, you just poof, shoot him out of the ring. Yeah, right? and and um, mixed martial arts does weights, and I, I think the age group thing is neat. And they separated by males and females in five year increments. Yep. And for Iron Man, in order to qualify to go to Kona, and here's the thing: is Kona the way they've got Kona set up? They they set up the transition for the swim the bike on a pier. There's only only so much room. So, and to keep it exclusive, you know, there are only, only so many slots available. So what they do is they look at the size of the field at any given race, and they may award uh, one Ironman slot to age group or two Ironman slots. Sometimes if the age group is really big, they might uh, offer three Ironman slots. So it goes either to the top finisher in that age group, the top two finishers, <clears throat> or the top three finishers in that age group, depending on the age group, how many people were in it, so. What I what I found most interesting is, you know, you um, well, you said something that flew out of my, it gone over a lot of heads, because it went over my, over my head for 50 years. You think that if you work out and exercise like that, you'd have a six pack. And what you learn after doing three iron rounds in a row that that's physical fitness, but abs are made in the kitchen. And at that same time, a lot of us, heavier guys um, all had friends that lost twice as much weight as we did that didn't exercise one time. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, you, um, and that's when you turned me on to, who was that other lady? Ann Jackson, remember? Yeah. You had Ann Jackson come in, or she, she's ever in town. Um, um, and you, you, and that was really cool. It was, it was a really neat journey because we had Ann Jackson come in here and it was me and four sons uh, in a bachelor pad you know, five guys. What do five guys eat? Did she tear up your kitchen? Oh, she she <laughs> threw... It, it was really neat did because... Did she throw your whole pantry away and start over she, again? <laughs> well, not only did she throw all the food away and start over, but she even, uh, you know, it was five guys. We didn't have an organized kitchen. I mean, you had spatulas and this, and she knew how to... She was a chef. She yeah. is a chef. So she bought us all these different... Like, like spoons where has like a little deal so so it's made out of rubber so it's not hot but it has a little deal so it'll sit on the deal and she came in and gave all these cooking lessons and what was so cool about it is all my boys can cook well and that was all part of this iron man journey. they just needed to be in, they needed to be enabled right? well the problem the problem with boys though <laughs> they'll cook like the most amazing dinner and they won't work. clean up a thing no right? no they're no. all good at, how clean is the kitchen now I thought that was for me. Yeah, that was for you. <laughs> they'll, they'll they'll do all that, but they're boys, and you know they'll. So I have this massively healthy dinner at six o'clock. Then about nine thirty, they're hungry again, don't want to cook another meal, and they're calling Domino's and having you know three oh, large uh, cheese pizzas delivered. And of course, I'm an idiot. You have to you know stub, Jump shove jump pie in my face. Yeah. But um. So but but they but that journey thing was so cool because um, we learned how to cook healthy and and all that. And um, that that was that was amazing. Um, you know, and it really it again it depends on what your goals are. You know, a lot of us athletes, one of our goals is is quality of life over as long a period of time as we possibly can. We want to be very healthy so that we can, in our seventies and our eighties, we can still be happy and healthy and feeling well and not spending all our time at the doctor's office, right? So. That healthy comes from the inside. It's making sure that you're fueling and take caring of your internal organs and your your system, so it's 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 metabolically efficient and happy, versus going out 
in doing the physical fitness part where your muscles are strong and your cardiovascular system is strong. And I'm not saying they're not mutually exclusive because they're not. They, they, do, they are intertwined, but you can go into the kitchen and, and create a lot of health and wellness for yourself without doing a tremendous amount of cardiovascular stress. When you go to start doing the, this kind of racing, be it bike racing or Ironman racing or even half iron or Olympic distance racing, if you combine great nutrition with that kind of exercise, then you're, you're optimizing. The other thing that I um, had no idea when I got into it, I mean, I just, you know, my dental assistant's husband did this. I knew I needed something drastic. That was the most drastic thing I could think of. But man, when I got in there, man, what a social community. Yeah. I think I think you get in there because you think, I need to do something huge. I need to, I need a big goal, you know, run a marathon or, and that how, only an Ironman is the damn marathon of cool down. I mean, you know, <laughs> um, and it was just, um, but everybody, bike swim run, when you're out there biking the same thing in the morning, you guys know everybody. I mean, I'd see you pass us with 25, 30 guys in your group and it's, and it's the same people. Um, you go in the swimming pool. I mean, it got to be where I could walk out in the swimming pool and some guy could be halfway across the lap and I'd know, okay, that's Steve, that's Wendy, that's Jan. You know, you just, you just... It, it's it's I think that's what keeps everybody in the social. Do you agree yeah, with that? There's, or? Oh man, there's definitely a huge social motivation factor, you know. And sometimes, you, like for instance, myself right now, I am not competing this year because of that knee replacement surgery I had done. But I am out riding with people who do have big goals. And my big goal was to get better so that I could continue to help them with their big goals this year and I'll jump back in next year. But that's, it's so much more motivating for me to go out and ride with friends and, and help them to get better and help them to get stronger than it is for me to go out and ride by myself or to go swim by myself. So, yeah, social factor is well, huge. like, like Just you, huge. you know, people that might have a membership to a, a gym, and they've been going to Gold's Gym or LA Fitness or LA Times or all, all these different gyms and everything. And I'll say, you know, do you have a bunch of friends there? And you, go, you know, I, I recognize a lot of people, but I don't really know anyone. It's because they're not in this thing of trying to achieve a goal where everybody's supporting each other. When, when, when you join. Um, when you try to do an Ironman or you join a running club or you join some club and you have a goal, it kind of pulls the whole team together. Sure, because you're looking for, I need to swim three times a week, my coach says so, I need to bike three times a week and, and I need to run three times a week or what have you. You know, you start looking around for, you know, I, I, where can I do this? You know, I don't know where to ride my bike. You know, who do I ride with? When do I ride? You start seeking, right? You know, and, and that's where, you know, Steve Bay is a pretty handy thing because you can throw notes out there and ask around and you can find out about swim groups, bike groups, run groups, so coaches, that's, that's your uh, that's your you just mentioned that's your Facebook group. Yeah, that's my and, Facebook group Steve And it's Bay. called Steve Bay. Yeah. Got a couple of people on there. Okay, so Facebook, Steve Bay. Now Steve Bay is a play on eBay? Yeah, well, yeah, it's a play on eBay, you know, back, in, group. back in the day. Steve Bay is a Facebook place to buy and sell stuff and post bro deals. Reach out directly to our athlete friends and sell your stuff to another athlete because one athlete's trash is another treasure. If you have questions, same thing happens in dating. Um, <laughs> exactly. If you have questions about Steve Bay, please reach out to myself, Steve L. Well, the man. Or one of my 10 plus hardworking admins. We won't buy it just a guys and gals on bikes. P.S. If you wish to join Steve Bay, we must be able to see your profile. We are looking to see what you have a genuine interest in cycling, triathlon, swimming, running, hiking, moving, or other healthy way of life activities. If we can't see your content, we will not approve you unless you're mess, unless you, I didn't even know that. So, so on Facebook, you can have it to where no one. Well, so it's kind of like the same idea with you in Dental Town, right? You know, not I'm not going to go join Dental Town necessarily because I don't have an interest in dentistry, right? So I may be close. But you do brush and floss every I day. I do. Well, not the same kind of interest that you, know, <laughs> you do or my buddy John Patterson does or something like that. But 
So what we're trying to do is keep our community really clean and keep our community full with people that are interested in healthy way of life activities. If, if somebody wants to come on and spam my page with Ray-Ban sunglasses or something like that, right. I don't want my community enduring that. And so my admins spend a tremendous amount of time looking over all the people that request to join. And if we can't verify that there's somebody that we know they are part of our uh, athletic community then yeah. they need to reach out to me and let me know why it is they want to join and we'll we'll approve if, if it's a legitimate reason and and what we find is that people won't respond if they were just rifling through I, we get apps all the time where people have uh they have 500 pages that they've liked <laughs> you know so and so, what, what, what does that mean to you uh, what that means to me is that they're spending all their time liking pages so that when they get approved to join a page, they can spam that page. Oh, I see. So they're, they're, trying, to I, I they're think, trying to market a product. I do think it's very weird when uh, people um, send you a friend request and you they don't know who they are. They don't have a face. And it's yeah. like some design and then there's nothing about information. And you always say, I think yeah. most everybody's learned by now that when you do that, you usually pay the price. You're going to get spammed back, or you're going to get okay. you know unwanted content. Well, this is kind of new to us because um, <clears throat> Facebook came out in 2004, right? And this is 2017, so that was 13 years ago. So I'm 55 minus 13. To we we were already old dogs in our 40s before yeah. we joined this yeah. game. I'm really proud. My mom, my mom um, is on now. On Facebook, wow. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, so on. So so, tell us the benefits and features of Steve Bay. Well, the why why would anybody listening here, uh, listening to you right now in Awatuki, want to join? What what's the purpose? Well, so here's here's the thing. Uh, Steve Bay is designed, and there are Steve Bays all over the country, which you may not know. They're just not largely successful like we are here in the Phoenix metropolitan area. Number one you is... You mean we, Steve, like Steve Bay or you, no, your own Steve Bay? I have Steve Bay, Colorado, Steve Bay, oh, uh, wow. Austin. You know, and the idea was to replicate it in other places across the country um, if we could get this successful. But you and I know that we have a new plan. <laughs> so we may not, you know, extend that. Or we may because it may be a good platform for, for moving on. But... Uh, the, the the benefit is say you have a bicycle you know you weren't sure whether you wanted to get it into triathlon or not so you decided you wanted to go out and get a bike but you wanted to get something relatively inexpensive and give it a shot before you invested five or ten thousand dollars in a super bike because we both know it's an expensive sport if you want to be competitive so that's where one man's trash and another man's treasure comes into play <clears throat> i know for example, a guy down in Tucson whose whose name shall uh, remain uh, undisclosed because he's he's my guy for getting zip wheels. And this guy's a pro racer, and every year he gets a fleet of zip wheels, and then he turns them over and gets new ones. Well, some of these wheels he doesn't even race on them; they sit in his closet. I've got one of the zip 808 wheels. It's a eighteen hundred and fifty dollar wheel that he sold to me for five hundred dollars and it was brand new or i can go spend eighteen hundred dollars so which would you rather well do? if you, you can say you got a bike you, that you want to go buy a bike and this guy uh is your frame size what have you <clears throat> let's assume all that works and he's raced for a season on uh on a five thousand dollar super bike and he's offering it for eighteen hundred dollars it's a screaming deal. You won't find that anyplace else. And there's bikes on Steve Bay for as as, as little as you know three, four, five hundred bucks, and they go all the way on up to I've seen bikes that they're selling for ten thousand dollars that were twenty thousand dollar builds. So there's everything on there, and it's got search engines. You can you can search for what you're looking for um, on Steve Bay. Sure, and this is a designed to be a friendly community with a tremendous amount of knowledge on there i've got a ton of is pro on, cyclists on, and that kind of thing so you can ask questions okay. you know i don't know where to who's the best swim coach in town you know who's the best run coach in town so where, where where's where's this at on the oh the, the search stuff oh you're not even joined man so later i'll show you on mine since i i've got this already set up here so here you go 
um, there's a search right here. Oh, no. Okay. So you punch the search button and say, just type in zip, Z-I-P-P. Um, Z-I-P-P. -P. Oh, that's the drinking place. On yeah. Party. Zips, Zips. Is that what you mean? There you go. And now you can scroll through and you see all kinds of branded wow. products that are... That there's zip. Now is that a function you did or is that a function Facebook? Facebook did, did that. Facebook did that. So there. Are you kidding me? I don't have time to do all that. I'm a working guy, like you said, right? Well, you so, never told him what you do for. Uh, what, what's your day job? Uh, I'm an engineer, and I work on semiconductor products, and I also work at uh, Lifetime Fitness. I've been. Uh, so where do you, do you tell me where you work at? Sure. Where, where, where oh, are you I, I work at a company called NXP. NXP. So the, the did I ever tell you my only engineer joke? No, don't. I, I only can, can I? <laughs> sure. I only have one engineer joke in my entire life. Uh, Fifty-five laps on the sun. I only did one. So there's basically three kinds of engineers, right? If you plug it in, takes electricity. It's electrical engineer. Um, if it doesn't That's take me. electricity, you're an electrical engineer. I'm electrical. If engineer. it moves like a wheel, a motor, an engine, it's a mechanical engineer. And if it doesn't move and it doesn't take electricity, like a land, a building, or a bridge, it's a civil engineer. So the three of them are sitting around having lunch, and the um, electrical engineer says, you know, God obviously was electrical engineer. And they said, why? And they said, well, look at the human body, the brain, the nerves, the spine, it's all, it's all electricity. And the mechanical engineer said, you know, I was at a ballet last night, and I was watching the ballerina move around, and he had to be a mechanical engineer. And the civil engineer said, no, God was absolutely a civil engineer. They go, how could God be a civil engineer? And he said, who else would put a wastewater treatment through a recreational park? <laughs> and <laughs> <there> you <have. laughs> so, um, so you're an electrical engineer by day. I am. And then you, uh, you work at Lifetime. Yeah, I've been, <clears throat> well, I've had a lot of roles at Lifetime Fitness. Um, back in the day, I was the national operations manager for their cycle club. I helped Lifetime start up what now is their uh, cycling club. Um, I ran the uh, area here in uh, Phoenix, so I had uh, all four clubs here. And you met Phoenix the founder of Lifetime. What? Oh, no. Yeah, Brahm Akrati is a friend of mine. Well, what's his name? Brahm Akrati. B-R-A-U-M. B-R-A-M. B-R-A-M. Brahm. B-R-A-M. A-K-A-R-A-D-I. A-K-A-R-A-D-I. We, re we refer to him as B-A, but I'll... Uh, so his name's Brahm Akardi? Brahm a karate. Yeah, I'll show it to you because it, it, it messes everybody up. B A H R A M. Oh, Baram. Is it is it pronounced Baram? Baram. He lives up what? Like Minnesota or something? He lives in Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota, yeah. And, uh, and corporate headquarters is in Minnesota. Yeah. And um, but anyway, um, I've been teaching their uh, group fitness classes uh, for sixteen years. So let me let me tell you. Um, um, what's really cool about what you do, which is a big complaint against Ironman and cycling, is that a lot of people, they say, these streets are crazy. I don't want to be on the street. And I used to go to your, what was it, 5 a.m. Yep, spin five, class? Yeah, 5, 5, And you think, yeah. you think, you know, when you're biking on a street, you get to see South Mountain, and it's all scenic and everything. But I'm not kidding you, every third car is driving by like this. And when you're out there, in the morning, you can see the glow of their their screen, and I mean, yeah, what percent of people driving are texting? You know, my from my personal experience, I you know it seems like 60, 75 percent. It's more common to see somebody with their phone in their hand now than it is to not see a phone in their hand. And the other thing that was people. really creepy is you would be running or biking along a curb and you just see these black tire marks over the curb. Yep, bumping like, into the curb and that, up what, over the why top. Why is there yeah. black rubber on all the curbs? And there was a girl walking on the L.A. Warner Loop and a car walking with traffic yeah. on the sidewalk Bitter. and a guy coming on the other side cross clear over and hit her and pinned her in the wall. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of rational people say I'd rather do a spin class. But in your first mind you're like, well that would be boring. You're sitting there and pedal. Oh my God, you're so fun. <laughs> the only complaint I've ever heard from your spin class is uh, some of the older women say, that music is too, too loud. loud. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it, man. You had great songs, great motivation and crazy and all and that's another neat thing you all these different abilities 
So yeah, an older you, fat you grandpa can't, you can can't be get dropped. Slow. You can't get dropped in a spin class. And there, there's <laughs> some guys that are biking so hard, their actual spin bike is sometimes bouncing moving. up and down. Have you seen that? And the pool of sweat down on the floor yeah. after they're done is pretty amazing too. Yeah. Very, very fun. Very. Easy. You, you, you should be. You could have been a motivational speaker. No, I'm serious. Well, you have to teach me about that. You, 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 you absolutely could could be very motivational. Very. And another thing that socially seems to me so. You know, my dental office just turned 30 years old, so I got a bunch of dentist friends where our 30-year behaviors, whenever we meet, we go to a sports bar and watch the Cardinals or the Suns or the Diamondbacks and drink beers and eat burgers and pizzas and all that stuff. And I always thought, well, that that's what you do when you get together with your buddy dentist. You know, you go drink beer and eat pizzas. Then when I joined Iron Man, Brad Sandvik is a, another dentist here in Ahwatukee. Lewis Kaur is a dentist. And so now I am, um, so you think, well... It's only fun to meet with other dentists when you, you can't talk at a, at a continued education lecture, you're, 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 you're in school. But it's fun when you go out to you know drink beer and watch, watch sports with dentists. It was, it was actually more fun because we would go out on the, um, um, what's that? Um, on the B-line. On the B-line. Yeah. And me and Brad Lewis would just giggle like school kids for, I mean, we'd, we'd go on 100-mile bike rides. And in a 100-mile bike ride, you... Actually, it, it was it was no different, and I used to sit there and think, "That's really weird." I had no idea that a two, four, six-hour bike ride is just as fun as golfing with someone for four hours, or sitting there at Zips um, eating burgers and wings, or a native New Yorker. I mean, it's just well, you feel a little better about yourself oh, yeah. when you're done, <clears throat> and you still got to cover the same ground, right? You still got to have a conversation. You might stand a chance of actually hearing what they have to say because the music's not blasting so loud that you have to, you know, right? fight to try right. to have the conversation. Because it's not smart to listen to music when you're biking or running on the street. You need to be aware of your resistance. That's, that's one thing I think is crazy. I'll, you'll, you'll see people out there running in the morning uh, or biking with, with headphones in. It's like, dude, you need to be aware, you know, you you need to hear the honking horn or the or if they're not honking, you need to be able to hear them hit you, right? <laughs> I'm teasing. So let's talk about let's talk about the um, the uh, the other bikers who say, you know what? I don't want to be hit by a car. I want to actually fall into a cactus. The mountain bikers. Uh, do you? Uh, that's not a tri sport. Uh, it's not in there, man. But what, what do you what do you think about mountain biking? I love mountain biking. As a matter of fact, I've done some of the hardest mountain biking events on the Colorado. Planet. Yeah, up well, in Colorado, Le Lifetime has uh, what's the name of that the one? Leadville Trail One Hundred Mountain Bike Race. <clears throat> it's actually a hundred four mile mountain bike race. It starts Leadville. It starts in Leadville at. <laughs> I believe the elevation in Leadville is 10,200 or 10,400 feet. That's the starting elevation, okay? During the course of the day, the amount of climbing that you do, now you don't, you, you'll climb up, you'll come down, you'll climb up, you'll come down kind of thing, but your, your uh, elevation change over the course of the day is over 12,000 feet of climbing. 12,000 feet of climb. That's just, and it's how many miles was it? 104. And you did it with my next door neighbor, my neighbor, two doors down, Dave. Uh, Dave, yep. I, I've What's done his? it twice with Dave Borland, yeah. Dave Borland, who used to play football at, at U of A? At University of Arizona. He was the center, a uh, uh, point uh, nose guard for U of A. Which is bizarre because most linemen don't have any knees um, when, because he's our age, isn't he's he? He's a smart him? guy. He saved his knees. <clears throat> and he is a strong mountain biker, let me oh. tell you what. And again, that's what's so motivational about it because, uh, you know, these guys are just completely out of my league. But when I see what you and Dave do, like Leadville, it, it makes me go further. I, I, I think when you, it's kind of like the difference between lifting weights in your garage or lifting weights a lifetime. Right. When you lift your weights in your garage, you're like, okay, that's pretty good. You go to lifetime, you're like, holy moly, that guy over there is 10 years older than me and he's putting up twice as much weight. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. I think, I think workouts are, are longer and more intense when you add a social component to it. I mean, every, obviously everyone's different. Well, you're encouraging each other and pushing each other to go a little bit harder, and you've got that hardcore goal looming out there, so you're both vectoring towards that goal. So there's a purpose behind why you're training as hard as you are. When you're training without purpose, it makes it really difficult <clears throat> to 
complete your training and to and to replicate it day after day. You got to have a goal. It yeah. really makes a big difference. Yeah, uh, yeah, goals. I mean, and, and the real secret too is that everyone's goal is different, right? So when I take on coaching clients, you know, the first thing I ask my uh, athletes is, what is it that they want to accomplish? What's their big race and why? I need to know why they want to complete that race so badly. Okay, but let's let's slow down, Spanky. First of all, how do they contact you? If she's listening to you, he's listening to you. Um, well, they can contact me at my uh, personal email s dot l well s dot dot l well e l w e l l at cox dot net via my cell six zero two four nine nine one one three three. Text is best, and that um, number's on any bathroom wall. And yeah, it's all it's ridiculous, I mean, man. Seven Eleven Circle K. The guys are spray painted. <laughs> so your phone and is six zero two four nine nine one one three three. And your email is s dot l l at cox dot net. Is l l um okay at cox dot net? Yeah, and then I have Isn't that weird uh, that cox is dot net not dot com. Yeah kind of crazy it, it's the biggest dot net in the world i mean who else has a dot net i don't know but anyway um and then i have a i have a training uh web page it's called train t-r-a-i-n the number two dot c-o not c-o-m <clears throat> somebody already had train to win dot com so i use train to win dot c-o okay so train to win dot c-o train numeral two win dot co what are my awatuki homies gonna find on train to win well dot co you know that you don't know me from adam you know so it's a first pass screen for anybody to just go in the comfort of their own home and and look at what it is that i have to offer um there's a section on eating it's called eat to win and then there's another section called get speed and endurance there's another section called move the needle i know there's a lot of people that train and it just seems like they never change so my uh, uh oh my god i'm going through i mean this is what it's like i mean i know like like she's a cosmetologist what's her name oh yeah that's olivia olivia actually is uh one of my training buddies right now we took olivia on with our training group about two years ago and Olivia has got an amazing attitude, just an infectious, positive uh, attitude. And she is super, super strong now. She works at uh, Madison Avenue as a hairstylist. At Madison Avenue? Yep. I just got through today riding an 80-mile bike ride with Olivia. Do you, do you use her services professionally? I, she just makes me look beautiful, just yeah, like you, yeah. right? So, I got yeah. a permanent, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, uh, I got a half. We got a two Check for it one. Out. We got a two for one on a permanent deal. We did? Um, so, and, and so that email is train to win co at gmail.com. Train to win co at gmail.com. Do you like giving that out or not? Um, I don't mind giving that out. I prefer the S dot L well one. Okay. And actually, and why if, is someone, that? if someone, well, because we've got little hiccups with the, with the web page. If somebody puts a note on and sends, sends it to that email site, I don't always get the message. To your personal website? Uh, no, to the to this website. Which one? So that? there's a the, the 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 train to win one. So so it uh, it has a it's a, broken. A, a I need bug? I need I need the help of your team. Oh well, that, that that's a bug. I mean, that can be that can easily be fixed. Yeah. So, so that, anyway, I think that's I think Gmail's the most common. Um, email. Yeah. Well, it's it's if they fill out the little thing at the end on the website and they push send, it doesn't always feed through. But if they use the Gmail. Uh, uh, Let's talk about your sponsors. Yeah. Are, they, are these still your sponsors? Or? I got the best sponsors in the world. Well, let's my talk about all your sponsors. My sponsors are absolutely amazing. Are they all in Ahwatukee? Um, they're all, for the most part, they're in Ahwatukee. There's a couple of them that are outside of Ahwatukee. Well, we don't talk about it outside of Ahwatukee. This is Tukey Town. Tukey Town, that's right. I mean, if you are one of those people over in Chandler or Tempe... <laughs> I mean, come on. We got to draw the line somewhere. It's yeah, like I, you don't talk to U of A fans, do you? I mean, hey, 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 now I came from U of A. Oh, my God. Cancel this the is, show. This is the, ultimate, the this is the ultimate quagmire right here, you see, because but I, you have to I, I graduated from U of A 
and two of, two two of my sons are Barrett Honors College. You know, one's at Barrett and one graduated from Barrett. Well, mm-hmm. that, that's what you. He's think, living at home. That's what you so think. I got ASU you went kids. Back, I mean, you used to be a Neanderthal caveman girl man, then you made it to U of A, and now your kids they've evolved all the way to ASU. <laughs> but tell them tell them the true story about how you got your diploma for U of A. See, if you just drive down to Tucson real slow with your windows down, they'll throw a diploma in your back seat. Oh, I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, you're being cruel. Howard. Am I being cruel? Hey, so let's talk, about, yes. let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about. Let's talk about. We'll leave ASU and U of A out of it. Let's talk about uh, who's in Awatuki here. So Spooner Physical Therapy is in Awatuki, and tell us about Spooner. Oh, I can now, spend. Now, a whole, I can spend a whole hour talking I, about Spooner. Oh, okay. So I just pushed, pushed it. And, and off you go to Spooner Physical Therapy, right? So on the website, if you if you touch any of the uh, logos for any of my well, sponsors, let's go through your sponsors. Lines. They'll appreciate that. Yeah. So Spooner Physical Therapy, they're actually high on my list of my favorite people in the world right now because uh, we entered into a a pretty big task of rehabilitating my left knee after I had a total knee replacement. Back. You had a total? Where? Where? Yeah. Let, me, let me see which one. You want to see it? show these guys too so the scar runs about that long so this was done on june 12th today i rode 80 miles june 12th of 2017 yeah isn't that amazing 16 weeks 16 weeks ago 16 weeks ago and you biked 80 miles yeah that is amazing my friends that are oncologists say the same thing they say uh, some people get chemo and radiation and then go to work all day and um, they just, the mind is so powerful. The, 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 yeah. Just like you said, when you get a, a client, you can't tell what's in their heart. Right. That's what my oncologist friends say. Yeah. He says, there are just people that show up and you, they're just like, I'm going to beat this. I'm going to, I'm going to. Yeah. They want to win. And yeah. then there's people that. Senator that, McCain, that, how long did it take him to get back down to Congress after he went to Mayo and had surgery, chemo, radiation, was off what? He was just. 10 days? Yeah, he was just back on it. Yeah, uh, you're a beast. Congratulations mm-hmm. on that, dude. That is yeah. mind over matter. So, so Spooner helped you do that? Yeah, you know, and they have the same kind of mentality in that they understand the team approach and they understand that getting well has a lot more to do with attitude and teamwork and, and doing the work and doing it intelligently that it has to do with just, you know, hooking up some tools and doing a little bit of manipulation and sending your way, sending you on your way. They are incredibly engaged so my you, physical therapist jenna was in my surgery with me she came into the operating room watched the surgery dialogued with the doctor as the surgery was going on so she knew what special needs i would have when we came out of that holy thing. moly yeah i imagine total you, commitment you i know. imagine you being all that in a bag of chips so you would have had uh, the ceo and president tim spooner himself <laughs> you just Tim's a pretty, really Tim's a pretty busy guy. So too busy for yeah. Steve Bay with fourteen thousand. How many people follow you on Steve Bay? Yeah, uh, fourteen thousand and change. Well, and and who was your Pete, physical therapist? What was her name? Her name's Jenna Salvar. Nice. Yeah. All right. Who's your Who's your other sponsor? I have a ton of them. Um, so the the next one on the list that we should talk about is. Uh, is uh, AZ Spine Disc and Sport. I think you probably know uh, Dr. Angie Christopher and her team. Love her. So she has a, a multifaceted uh, uh, sports uh, rehab facility, for lack of a better word. They've got everything in there. It, she's working that place to, to become kind of a one-stop shop. They even have workout in there. Um, and she has a lot of complimentary types of services um, that, that Spooner offers. But a, a, a big difference is her focus and her area of expertise is in um, uh, chiropractic. And they have, she was a lifesaver for me. Back a couple of years ago, I had a bike wreck in Tour to Scottsdale going about, ah, it's Tour to Mesa, going about 30 miles an hour uh, on Mountain View up in Scottsdale. And I went ass over tum- ass over toenails and uh, broke my collarbone. And I, little did I know, I compressed my L1, L2, my L4, L5. What that means, for those of you who don't know, is that all of a sudden when I'm standing, 
I'm getting nerve compression, which puts my leg to sleep, my right leg. I, I was unable to stand on a hard surface, and uh, uh, it, it made it difficult for me to function. I went in to see uh, Dr. Angie, and she was able to, to treat me and put me on a pretty uh, hardcore regimen of something called spinal decompression therapy, where she basically removed the pressure on that nerve through some uh, uh, techniques that her team specializes in, and I have very, very minimal symptoms now. And we combine that with some core strengthening work, and and uh, I can do pretty much anything I want to now. I rare. I was seeing her three, four times a week at the beginning. I I rarely see her at all. She's probably mad at me that I don't come and see her more often. I was gonna go to her for treatment, but my insurance. I had to go to the vet. And the vet um, said that due to my insurance, he could only put me down. Wow, that's too that's too bad. You should not go see a vet. That is uh, that is you must have better insurance than me. <laughs> so um, so who's next on? Shout out to Angie. Yeah, um, shout out to Spooner. Shout out to Angie. Um, uh, I get all of my uh, massage therapy done. I get massage therapy once a week. I go to In Motion Health and Wellness. Um, Heather Beninato owns that uh, uh, company, and they're they're incredible. They ha they have a great little massage therapy team in there. They do a whole lot more than massage therapy. They've got cold wave laser. They do ART. They've got a chiropractor in there. So as, as you can see, there's a lot of overlap. My sponsors and what they're capable of doing. Yep, that's in motion. That's right? Yeah. So my massage therapy uh, happens there, and and I can't emphasize enough. If you're committed, you know you you. You can't wake up and go do an 80 mile bike ride and feel good afterwards when you're 56 years old without doing something for your body. Because you just you just exhaust yourself. It's it's a lot of work, and and I'm doing it on a. a on and a you might think meeting. it's a lot of money, but what I've noticed um, is that everybody spends a lot of money. So these guys will go go to massage therapy, but maybe you're going out to eat at an expensive restaurant. So you right. might have to ask yourself. What do you? What's better for your body? Steak and baked potato and drinks. That's the price of, you know, massage. By the way, yeah. touch. What, what's the difference between massage therapy and physical therapy when you go to these places? Oh well, both? yeah. Well, so and let me let me make it clear that that Spooner offers a a whole lot more than just physical therapy that's their bailiwick, but they also their offer their bailiwick. Yeah, their bailiwick. <clears throat> that's their thing. Physical therapy is. Did a, you say daily the, wick or Bailey? Bailey wick. What? Yeah, never mind. What is that? Is that where, where were you born? That's and a thing. Indiana. Is that an Indiana term? It must be. Is that baling hay? Yeah. <laughs> is it is a baling hay term? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> um, so Spooner, uh, their primary focus is physical therapy. So if uh, I was had my surgery and I came in with a leg that basically wouldn't bend. From the trauma of the surgery <clears throat> um, we worked for a period of time and got my leg to extend completely and to bend to about 125 degrees <clears throat> and we did that over <clears throat> a, a period of time to, to gain function and extension and flexion because that's what you need in order to pedal a bike which was my big goal and to rollerblade and to, to climb stairs and do all your daily activities, even standing, you know. So um, we started out with range of motion and then we worked on strength and conditioning and now we're working on plyometric work. So I'm, I'm jumping in non-sagittal plane, sagittal's straightforward plane. We're, we're doing off, off axis work in multi directions, trying to get that leg strong because I need that for the activities that I participate in. So they've been partnering. Now, in all in all honesty, that's a setback having to have it a knee replacement or anything. Did did your mind? Did you ever um, afterwards? Did you ever like go into depression or was it a setback where you just said I'm going to throw in the towel? Or well, you know, or, or did you just keep your head on through the whole thing? You know, I'm human. You know, and so I there I have my moments where <laughs> I was pretty depressed even during the course of the rehabilitation i had my moments when i was depressed but 
my team, uh, we met a year before and started talking about this uh, because I was in search for a doctor to be able to perform this and allow me to do what I want to do, which is triathlons and bike racing and rollerblading. And where did you find that doctor? Where was he? Um, well, he wasn't in Ahwatukee, sorry. Yeah. Uh, he's here in Phoenix, right underneath my own nose, probably one of the best total knee replacement surgeons in the country, and I didn't know about him. It took me a year to find well, him. Well, shout out his name. <laughs> his name's Dr. Uh, Stefan Tarlow, T-A-R-L-O-W. Nice. And he does nothing but knees. That's it. Oh, and he is he's best in class at what he does. And how did and, you how did you find him? Well, um, I network. Yeah. So I, you know, when I decided I was going to have my knee worked on, I just started talking to everybody I know, and I have um, a doctor friend of mine that I was dialoguing with, and he said, "I know this guy, and his totally replacement guys are out on the court playing basketball." And as you well know, basketball is not just running straight. You are starting and stomping and sprinting and, and moving every direction. It, it, it's as strenuous on your knee as any sport that I can imagine. And uh, for a guy to have knee replacement surgery, <clears throat> be out there in the court, I'm thinking to myself, man, I need to find out who this guy is. And so I well, found... Well, who's, who's the only guy that played in the NFL and in baseball? Bo. With knee replacement? No, he... Bo, oh, he played... Bo, oh, okay. I see. Yeah, he played both, but then... What was it? Bo Jackson, was it? Yep. And yep. then afterwards, that trauma, he had to have both knees replaced. And after he... For his rehabilitation, he became a third-degree black belt. Yeah. And he that was... That's how successful yeah. people... It's like, okay, I'm going to have a, both knees redone. I need a goal. I need a goal. And what was his goal? To become a third degree black Black belt belt. with two artificial knees. How mind over matter is that? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you that I've been through a lot of things in my life and that knee replacement surgery was, from a pain point of view, was off the charts. It was as tough as anything I've been through. And the pain after the surgery or the mental pain? The pain physical pain, pain after the surgery. The mental pain piece of it was getting my head wrapped around the fact that I can do this and it's, it's going to be an improvement and not a, not a setback in my life. And that was where my, my team at Spooner, my team at AZ Spine, my team at In Motion Health and Wellness, we, we, we all talked about the fact that I was going to do this and I got my team aligned. I got them ready for me. My massage therapist knew I was coming in with uh, a battle scar that would make most people run to the bathroom and throw up. This thing looked like a, a centipede. You know, it had staples in it. It was crazy, ugly. And when we got done, you know, uh, she was ready for it. it. Bothered her, she worked around it. And I trusted her because I've spent so much time on the table with this massage therapist, you know, I trusted her. And that's the thing is I trusted my team. I trusted uh, Jenna. I knew she was going to come into the surgery. I knew she knew more about what I've never, I've never even heard of something like that. The only, the only people I've ever seen in the surgery room is if you're, um, you know, when you're using implants or you're doing a knee or a two, sometimes the, the reps are in there. Um, and they they want to see how their products are working and they have to assist the doctor too, because they're the, they're the product expert. But this is something that this is out of the box thinking that, that I do. It, it, it's not something that is unique. The doctor's not going to ask you, hey, can, can, can I get you know, a seating chart for the people that are going to come in and watch your surgery? That's not something that's typically done, right? But I asked the doctor, can my PT come in to the surgery? And, and he granted that permission, which is, which is pretty cool. So and your orthopedic surgeon, the website is T-A-R. T-A-R-L-O-W. Then knee. So tar, low, knee. So like yeah. black tar, um, low, like lower knee. He works on the lower part of the body. You know, the, re- the reason I'm doing this is because you wouldn't believe how many uh, podcasts um, are actually, uh, like 85% are listened to on iTunes. Oh. So it's a, it's a multitask behavior. And what they, what they do is they got an hour commute to work and um, podcasts is crushing radio. Uh, user generated content of podcasts is crushing radio because radio is going to be half commercials. Maybe they'll play six songs that you don't even like enough to buy on your iPhone. Right. So a monomic device to remember the orthopedics is, you know, tar, black tar, um, low, you know, works on lower body knee. 
So that's pretty cool. So you recommend this uh, Dr. Tarlow? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Leading he, he robotic gave, he, macroplasty surgeon with over 20 years experience. How cool is that? He gave me back my life, gave me another chance. And, you know, if if you're not a believer, after I jump on a bike and do an 80-mile bike ride, most people wouldn't jump on their bike and do an 80-mile bike ride if you offered them 100000 bucks, They wouldn't be able to get it done. So he, so you're so, a believer? Oh, yeah. Big and, now, but isn't I tell Justin, you, it comes isn't like Justin I said, Bieber's? Are you a a, a Bieber for no, Justin I'm Bieber? Not a Bieber. Or, you're not <laughs> not a Bieber. Not even a Bieber. Aren't fans called? But anyway, I would never do this without a team. No way. You know, you got to align your team because the you know, my Spooner team kept me motivated when you know when I got depressed and I wanted to quit and and, and uh, they helped get me to where I'm at right now. You know, along with a lot of other people. Well, I have to, I have to tell you that um, pain, you know, um, acute pain, long-term chronic pain is very, very hard on humans. It puts a lot of them into depression, addiction to their painkiller, the opiates. Um, when you don't feel good, when you walk around, you know, pain is just tough. It's one of the hardest. It's one of the hardest things to deal with. It's tough to deal with. No yeah. doubt about it. So, and it's hard on your your own personality, your family, your friends, your coworkers. Right. And I want you know it, it was it was tough on my coworkers. You know, I was out of work for ten weeks. You know, so it's tough to pick up. And, the and how right how now. did uh, how did work take that? Uh, you know, not well, but we do the best that we can. I mean, they did not create any problems for me. Um, I will say that uh, uh, you got to watch out with social media because the uh, insurance company actually had people looking at my Facebook profile, looking at me and what I was doing. And at a certain point in time, I got into my um, rehab where we were working on range of motion and I got to the point where I could pedal a bicycle. And so, you know, Jenna and I were talking about it and she said, well, you know, you can come in here and jump on our stationary spin bike and, and watch TV. Or I said, well, can I jump on my mountain bike? I live like four miles from Spooner. Can I ride my mountain bike over to Spooner and then do my exercises in my PT and then ride my bike home? Is that cool? It's cool with me as long as it's cool with Tarlo. Tarlo's like, giddy up. Well, the insurance company said, if you can ride your bicycle, then you're rehabbed enough for us. And, you know, how do they know you're riding your bicycle? Oh, you, you posted on Facebook? They sure they would look on Strava or what have you. You never everybody's looking. Yeah, there's no secrets once you're on well, Facebook. Well, right? for occupation, so dentists have uh, physicians, lawyers, disability insurance. Sure. And we've all known cases where someone was so disabled they couldn't be a dentist, but then they got caught, um, you know, climbing, you know. Mount Kilimanjaro or something. Yeah, Mount yeah. Kilimanjaro or... Um, well, there was, you know, and I wasn't trying to keep any secrets from anybody. You know, yeah. it's just simply, you know, a matter of trying to rehab back to the place where I was before. I uh, mm. I can't believe it. When you uh, when I asked you to grace the show with your honor and, and presence, you said, what could we talk about for an hour? We already went over. It's oh, over. No. So my, my, my final question to you is... Um, you're, you're talking to a bunch of people in all two right now, and they're saying, who's your best coach? I mean, she might be thinking, I'm too young, or I'm too old, or I'm too fat, or I'm too, you know, who, and because you kind of, uh, you work with a lot of elite athletes. Do you work with non-elite athletes? I mean, obviously you work with me. I don't know. I don't know how more non-elite you can get than me, but uh, but uh, who, who, who should contact you where you would be part of their team to get their, because you got to be, an armchair psychologist. You got to be a motivator. You got to get them in a social network. But who to make your pitch? Who, who should be things. contacting you? Well, there's one thing I need to do first, and, I, and there's one more uh, sponsor that we didn't oh. discuss. Oh my gosh! And that was um, um, Global Bikes, and they're just right around the corner from you too. Global Bikes, Brandy and Al Leepak have. Where Where uh, are they? They are here in Ahwatukee, right uh, right next to the grocery store down the street. Um, right at uh, which, which Grand Circle store? and Ray. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Global Mike's right I'm, there. They have three or three, three, four, four locations, I think. But um, 
the the Awatuki store takes incredible care who's of the, the who's the owner brandy and al Lee i'll Pat. tell you i tell you what we'll do you any of your sponsors have them come right here you know where i live you yep. came here you've been here several times and uh we'll do them ball back to back great we have you global bikes angie christopher but tell angie she's got to bring her husband because he's he's the uh, and Angie's the secret sauce at that place, but her husband is amazing too. He's a rock star. He is a rock he's star. He's a great guy. And and who was the other? Was, okay, so talk about Global Bikes. Uh, well, I mean, what can I say about Global Bikes? They just have an incredible staff of people from their salespeople to their uh, mechanics. Um, I have a special relationship with them in so much as. Well, what uh, would they think of you doing Steve Bay? Aren't you now a competitor? That's a beautiful thing, and I'm really glad that you asked that. Because people would think, hey, I have a bike shop as a sponsor, yet I'm selling used bikes, right? And I'm making no money for it. Everybody's getting killed. The thing is, is, is this, is that you, you, you come to Steve Bay and you don't own a bike. And you don't know if you're even going to like it or not. And what happens is you buy a bike and you go and you ride it around. And, and, and you're like, oh my God, I love cycling, but I just sunk $1,000 into this used bike. Now what do I do? Well, the bike shops don't want to reel in all these you know, $1,000 used bikes. They don't have the, the space or anything else for it. So, you know, but they love having a person come in and go, I rode a Steve Bay bike for like six months and now I want to buy a new bike. So boom. Those new those those cyclists come in and they buy the new bikes at the shop. Not only that, but we have right on our 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 site support your local bike shop. So they go into the bike shops and they buy their tubes and their CO twos and their tires and their nutrition. And I'm telling you, the money for the bike shops is not in the bike. The money in the, the bike. It's just like buying a printer at Costco. Yeah. They don't make the money on the printer. They practically give the damn printer away. The printer is an ink dispenser. Right. They make all their money on the shavers. Ink. Refill right. the blades. Right. I remember when I remember freshman year of uh, Creighton in Omaha, Nebraska. Everybody in there got all, every boy got free shavers. Yeah. Because the company knew, you know. Once I got we'll you hooked, it, we'll yeah. sell you. He's got a, they five sell dollar blades. blades, right? Yeah, and and the uh, the. I'm, 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 yeah. So we, they don't make any money selling the cars either, at these car lots. All these people are like, well, did you get a good price? I'm telling you, everybody gets a good price. They, they don't make money selling new cars. It's a service. It's a service. It's a service. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think we're surprising anybody by that comment, right? Yeah. So, um, but uh, your your other question had to do with I train a lot of elites, which is really, I I do have some uh, uh, people that I trained before they were elites and they became elites you know there's stepping stones and there's specialists people that specialize in different areas and um i encourage anyone who's interested in a coach to to shop around because you need to find somebody from a personality point of view that's a that's a, a great match sometimes it's like oil and vinegar kind of thing you know you and so i interview everybody that that wants to coach with me because I work and I'm a dad and I coach and I also teach at Lifetime Fitness and I do my own training, my white space is extremely limited. I am not a full-time professional coach, although I am USA Cycling certified. I'm USA Triathlon uh, certified. Uh, I am American Council on Exercise uh, Group Fitness certified. So I've got all the certifications to do, you know, it, to help anybody that, that is motivated to do so. So what I'm looking for in an athlete is somebody that comes to me that is extremely motivated to do something crazy like you were, but don't necessarily have uh, the structure. They don't know how to get it done. I am an incredibly good beginning level 
triathlete coach. I can lay out training plans that are simple, that are achievable, that are intelligent. I can provide a lot of support. And I've got an insane network of really great sponsors and, and people that I know that can help me. I use the community to help my athletes become engaged in the community and, and become intelligent about the sport. And at some point in time, these athletes will become better than my ability to coach them just because of time. And they will move on and they'll either become self-coached or they will find a, maybe a full-time coach. So I'm a great entry level. And how much does this cost? Uh, it depends on what you want. Yeah, um, no one size fits all. Yeah, I used to tell you this and watch this guy for years. Um, he had athletes from every level, every age. That one guy I joined with and I remember had six daughters Yep. And, uh, can we say his name? Uh, Randy. Ray, Randy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he, he'd be biking with me and Randy, and, um, which you were wondering who would have the heart attack first by the end of the road. <laughs> and then he'd jump off and some elite professional person. I, I remember one time I was watching, you're going to let the transition lesson where they, they, they come in off the swim, you're pulling off your, your uh, wetsuit, yeah. and you get in the bike, and they're like, pre-putting the shoes on the bike with all these little strings, you know, where I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going to sit down and take you know, your time, take my time. I'm not going to jump out of a wetsuit. I'm, I'm I, you know, so, so there's all these different levels, but I was watching the intensity of your training. It's good. They were called transitions. Yeah. Transition one was swim to, to bike. T2 transition two was bike, bike to run, to run. Oh my God, he put, he put more thought into that than brain surgery and a root canal on the same <laughs> I mean, seriously. So you, you well, can play it. You can play a lot of take, My athletes take those transitions real seriously because transitions are free time. What I hate the most about the transitions is you'd think they'd have a cold beer there waiting for you. I know, what the hell is where up that? Where, where is that? Where is that? Where? <laughs> and and la la last question, if, if someone was wanted to do a goal of um, a marathon, like the Phoenix Marathon. We have the Phoenix Marathon, the Rock and Roll yep, Home Marathon, yep. or an Ironman. Sure. When should they, how much time would someone need? That's a great question. So um, an entry-level athlete who, who, who has never done an Ironman before, they need about a 16-week periodization plan to get them ready to cross the finish line in Ironman. So you and go from I, zero it, to Ironman in 16 weeks? 16 week, um, 16 week transition time. Now, four months, you can take someone off the couch and cross the finish line. Somebody who has zero athletic, they, they don't have a bike, they've never swam, that's a completely different story, right? I'm they, talking about that person. Okay, the, I need a year. With yeah. Because I yeah. got to teach them how to swim. I'm going to tell you something, I'm on the bike part. Remember when I first met you and we were in the pool swimming and you were looking at me, you would swim 25 meters and you would look at me and go, can I do anything besides this damn American crawl? I don't want to do this American crawl for the swim. And you would be, you were looking for a way out. It took us a long time to get you to the point. And then now you'll jump in the pool and you'll swim 2.4 miles. It's like, Hey, I can, I can get this done. But it took a, it took us a year. Yeah. I remember, I remember out. also right. the bike, all the professional guys would lean forward on these, um, what on the arrow bars, on the arrow right? bars. that just thinking about it, I knew I'd flip the bike. I mean, it took me half a year. And and the first couple of times I tried it, I almost did wreck. I mean, it took me half a year just to go down to Arrow. Yeah. It, and so, yeah, uh, it, it but takes, I, started, I started way And zero. the equipment's more expensive, right? right? And so... It, and I agree on the bike because um, I did, um, you know, I bought my first starter bike. It was like 1500 bucks. And that was a mid size. It was kind of a mid range. It wasn't a something you bought at Walmart, but it wasn't a ten twenty thousand dollar bike. Yeah. And after um, one year, my buddy who got me into this, uh, Joe, my dental assistant, yeah. husband, he kept saying, he said, "Dude, you have to go fifteen miles an hour. You're only going thirteen and a half, and you're not gonna do it." And so I'd try and try and try and try, and, uh, and he finally said to me, "He says, you know what? You, um, if you went and bought some really nice wheels, you'll just go faster." So I thought, well, I'm probably not going to finish in time. So I, I went and bought 
some nice wheels. I don't know what they're called. They're in the garage. You can look at me right now. So I paid, I think, 1500 for the bike, but I paid 1500 to upgrade my wheels. Sure. The next ride, I was biking 15 and a half miles an hour. I mean, so I basically bought two miles an hour. Yeah. And you buy yourself over a long... Uh, 112 miles which you buy yourself is oh you could just your, your legs are are fresher you could so, just feel it, it went from feeling clankety 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 to just mm, yeah i mean it was yeah. it was really weird i and of course you know you never probably thought about a bicycle more than just when you were a kid just jumping on your bike you just thought a bike is a bike and you drive it to the night when you put the kickstand down we were little we just <laughs> Dumping the grass, but yeah, bikes well, are... Well, and, you know, if you really want to start talking about it, if your bike fits you properly, if the saddle is correct, if the seat height is correct, if the aero bars are in the correct position, if the stem <clears throat> is at the right height, if the length of the pedals, the crank arms, oh, are yeah. the correct length, there's details that you can have a bike that's a beautiful bike and very expensive that is as bad for you as a pair of shoes that doesn't fit you properly. Or you can have a cheap bike that fits you properly and you can go way faster. So fit is a really big deal. And these little details about uh, swimming, biking and running, transitioning um, are, are, are really what you're paying the coach for. You gotta go do the work still. The coach has gotta lay it out for you so you can be successful. So a brand new beginner, they're gonna need to think about these goals a year in advance. Somebody that can swim a little bit, they can bike a little bit, they can run a little bit, and they're thinking about moving up. I love to have a year with people because I get them ready for their first sprint, then we get them ready for their first Olympic, which is twice as far. Then we get them ready for a half Ironman, and then their A race, their big race is the Ironman. So we kind of build them slowly up to that. So we're changing their nutrition, we're changing their lifestyle, we're changing their their integration within the community. They don't they don't become coach dependent after a few months. You integrate them into the community, and they're riding with Olivia, and they're running with Susan Loken, and. And they're, maybe they're riding with me, you know, who knows what's happening, you know. Or Wendy Gesson. Yeah, or, or Jane, Jane McNeely, McNeely, right? And I, you know? I just want to end on this because we went way over time. And, um, Sorry. I just, I, no, no, no. I could talk to you 40 days, 40 nights. The, I just want to end on this. Some of my best dentist friends, like um, um, Dave and Rich Maddow, they've done 100 marathons. And you know what? They've never ran a step. You know, just just do something. I mean, if he, you know, what what he always tells me, he says, you know, it's um, it's a Saturday. There's a rock and roll marathon. They got all these booths set up, and there's music and people watching. And he goes out on a nice walk with for twenty six point two miles. And if you go to the back of the Iron Man, there's a bunch of people like that. You go to the back of the Phoenix Steel, there's just people. I mean. I mean, what's better, sitting on couch all day Saturday, watching college football, drinking beer and eating Domino's, or going down to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and walking 26.2 miles? I even know guys that are, guys and gals that are injured, okay? They can't run. So they'll go out and they'll swim and they'll bike and then they'll eat. If they can't walk the entire course, they'll either walk what they can or they'll just walk off the course and say, I'm done. And they've, they've, they've participated in the parts that they can or they'll do a relay. There's a relay. You can, if you're yeah. a good swimmer, you can be the swim leg and you can have somebody else that bikes and somebody else that runs and, you know. Uh, so just, just, just uh, move. And you can get Steve at S.LL. L is E L. Well, W E L L, you want to get well with S. L. Well at Cox.net or his phone number 602 499 1133. If you're in the bathroom now at Circle K at 48th and LA, just write that on the wall for the best coach ever. Thanks, thanks, sir. Seriously, thank you so much for all that you've done for me personally, for so many of my friends, for the community. I mean, you're certainly a pillar of the Awatuki community. Thanks for having me here today. It was an honor. It was an honor to podcast you. <laughs> all right, buddy.